Dr. Lindbergh and I were both uh, on the board of directors of SCAMSI, the Symposium of Acute Applications in Medical Care. He says, well, I got this great idea. He says, I think that we ought to have computer-based medical education in the medical schools, which sounds like, like, so what's new? But in 86, this was revolutionary. He says, and in order to set up to do that, I have to make, set up a new branch. I was offered the position and that was the educational technology branch. What I did as the, as the branch chief was go around the country to whoever would listen and give talks about how you could use video discs in those days and computers for medical education. And uh, that was right around the time that uh, the library came out with a pathology video disc. So I had a disc with information on it and you could write programs that would access the disc and create your own pathology course. So I, I had a, the basis for giving a talk. I gave the talk a lot of places. When I gave it at the University of Washington, the uh, chairman of the uh, biological structure department, they didn't call it anatomy, they called it biological structure, said to me, if you want to teach, use computers for teaching in a medical school, you should use it for the teaching of anatomy. And I said, well, why? And he said, because anatomy is three-dimensional. The group gets to take it apart once from one direction, not three-dimensionally. If that group does it wrong, they don't get to see what we want them to see. Hopefully the group next will do it and they can look over their shoulders. He said, if we could do it on a computer, then we could do it over and over again. You could take it home for homework. You do it like, like studying math. You could study it and from every direction. So I took the, 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 uh, the idea back to the library. Uh, Dan Macy's was the uh, director of Lister Hill. He was very supportive. And he explained that I had to go see Hack Schoolman. And Hack was the director of research and education. And Hack said, uh, well, you have to have a reason to do this. It has to be in the long range plan. Oh, he said, don't worry. It's in the long range plan. He says, it's in the fourth little book, and he got it out, and he, he, um, he showed me the lines, which said that the NLM should study the use of digital image libraries. He says, so what you're telling me is you want to create an anatomical digital image library. Dan Macy's and I called a meeting of the uh, people from the anatomy departments that I had discovered, and what they said was the library should provide the anatomical images, the digital images of the entire body, one body so everything would meet and give it to them and let them worry about the education. So the Visible Human Project was born. Would the Visible Human Project have happened without Lister Hill? I don't think so. I think the Lister Hill Center brought the right things together. It would have happened at a university if the universities could have found enough money. It might have happened in industry. We checked it, but it didn't fit the business plan and they weren't sure and so on. So it had to happen in, in the way I look at things in government. Where does technology meet clinical medicine, if not the Lister Hill Center?